Hey, Raj, how much did you enjoy the condom ride at Cedar Point this past weekend? I really liked riding on Magnum XL. Great ride. I mean, jerked me around a bunch, you know, ride had a great drop, great pickup. I mean, great speed overall. It was really good. I mean, great experience. It was the best two minutes of my life. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to episode 37 of the Coconut Curry podcast. On this episode, we are going to start our NFL division breakdowns with the NFC East, and we are also going to discuss all the new NBA free agency signings that have happened since we last recorded. We took last week off. We uh, were spending the last weekend in Cedar Point and moving around a bunch, so we're excited to get back into this. This is going to be eight straight weeks of just going through all the NFL divisions um, one by one, Let's go. giving our thoughts of all the teams. NBA, not the NBA, the NFL is back. Um, MLB is still <laughs> hanging around, but as a NFL and NBA podcast, we are very excited to have the NFL back going on. Before we do all that, if this is your first yes. time around here, we are three postgraduate students from the University of Pittsburgh. Raj, Peter, myself all on today. Expect some guests upcoming in some of our episodes. <laughs> a lot of our friends will be stopping by and discussing their favorite teams and their favorite divisions as well and we just chat about sports and hopefully offer a fresh new perspective if you like our content please comment subscribe like it helps us out a lot we always start by reacting to comments which we actually have a comment to react to today which is exciting let's go Um, retro dave 3000 decided to comment on our last post that the celtics were not actually the front runners all year despite because everyone was saying that the winner was going to come out the west in the beginning of the season which is actually just a crazy take because On its face value, it says like, oh, you know, everyone knew the Celtics were going to make the NBA finals, but everyone said the team that was going to win the championship was going to be from the West. But like, I don't almost any given year, if you make it to the NBA finals, you have at worst a 20% chance to win the finals. Like no, no (laughs) no team ever gets to the finals and we go, well, that team just had a 0% chance to win. That's assuming like any team that comes out of the West, like I can name all a bunch of teams, like I think the Celtic. I think the Nuggets would have beat the Celtics, and that's all I can say. Guarantee yeah. would have beat the Celtics. I'm not confident any other team would have beat the Celtics. Maybe the Timberwolves, yeah, really. but I don't think they would have beat them. The Mavericks clearly didn't beat them. The OKC wasn't going to beat them. The Lakers, yeah. who knows? They're first round exit. <laughs> so I'm sure everyone thought the winner was coming out the West. I think a lot of people did think that, but a lot of people thought the Nuggets were coming out the West. So once the Nuggets were out, I was like, yeah, the Celtics are going to win the championship. I don't know what you guys think about that. Yeah. I mean, really the, the big thing is kind of just like, look, if you're kind of writing Boston off as the bare minimum, they're making the NBA finals. Like at that point, it's a fifty-fifty. They win it or they don't. I think that, like, I feel like that makes you. I, a front, I feel like that makes you a front runner. If everyone thinks you're gonna, yeah. bare minimum, get to the NBA Finals, then you're a front runner. Exactly. Like that's how that works. Because like, yes, everybody thought the winner would come out of the West, but that's just that's more just saying how good the West is compared to the East, where everybody was like, yeah, Boston is making the finals. And then whoever comes out of the West that we believe is going to be the better team. It's not like a knock on Boston saying, oh, they're not good. It's like, there's just so many good teams in the West. We don't know who's going to come out of the West. Like, that's the point. (laughs) It's just like on face value value makes you the front runner. Exactly. (laughs) So it's like, if you're guaranteed to make the finals, yeah, you have the best chance of winning the finals. Who would have thought? Great. Shocker. Also, the Celtics entered the year with like the highest odds, which I know how odds like the idea with the odds is that the Celtics are more free to get to the finals than the Nuggets are. So it's not actually the head to head odds. So I understand why the Celtics had the biggest odds, but they still had the shortest odds to win the championship. Like if the actual exactly. actual narrative existed that they were going to lose to any Western Conference team, their odds still would have been lower because it would have been like, well, they have a zero percent chance against five teams who come out the West. But Everybody knew that they had the shortest odds because they had the easiest path, and they also had a fighter's chance against any team that came out. So, uh, exactly. Retro Dave, the Celtics were the front runners all year, and everyone knew it. You are wrong. Also, yeah. learn grammar because yep. Justin made that look way better for yeah, you. Yeah, I didn't read the actual quote. It starts <laughs> off with "They will not the front runners all year." <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I love making fun of grammar. So that's right. Re- such a big yep. comment. That's reacting to comments. But please keep, yeah, please keep commenting. It's very fun to talk about them. It helps yeah, us. Yeah, it gives us more content. Moving on to disgruntled moment of the week. 
This is a segment we do every week where we disgruntled, meaning dissatisfied or angry. We discuss moments in the sports world and our personal life that make ourselves angry or dissatisfied. Raj, starting us off strong, uh, off strong with some adulting stuff. Yeah, um, I hate my company's PTO policy. It is Uh-oh. stupid, and I don't understand. I don't care that I'm not a vested employee, but if I have all this PTO left over, why in the hell can't I use it while, like, a few like days before I'm quitting? Oh, you're not working that shift. I work every shift depending on when I'm needed, so how are you going to assume what shifts I work? So apparently I can't use a PTO on a Wednesday, even though I do work Wednesdays, but they claim I don't. Even though that you can see I work three Wednesdays a month. So like, I don't know where they're getting their facts from, but you, my company's PTO policy is unless you've been working there for 20 years, you can't like when you quit, your PTO doesn't get paid out unless you're a vested employee. So basically I have 15 hours of PTO that I can't redeem. And that's about a solid, like, I can't do math today, 300 for me or something. So it's like. Come on, let me use it, please. R- yeah, really, like there, that's... there, there should just be universally. This maybe this is if Joe Biden is listening. Um, this would be <laughs> like a like if you have PTO left over, just pay out the PTO. These corporations are doing just fine. You don't get PTO if you work at like the McDonald's or at like a small store. So it's not going to hurt small businesses, like because it just doesn't happen. All these big corporations do PTO, and they can afford to like pay you out of three hundred dollars but justin our shareholders will lose some money i know it's terrible you don't it's get terrible. it <laughs> um well well my company shouldn't have shareholders considering they're a non-profit but don't don't say that <laughs> don't don't say that <laughs> and, and not Uh-oh. to mention the accrual rate on the pto for the company we work for is is atrocious, atrocious. you you don't get any pto yeah. hours i like When I dropped from 20 hours a week to 15 hours a week, forget about it. Justin wasn't seeing any PTO. I think I like in an entire like six months, I accrued like two hours of PTO. It was absolutely brutal. I used, I think maybe, I think I used three hours of PTO one time because I wanted to leave early during the Christmas party that we had. And I did it. And so it was like, I was sitting at around 37 hours. I am currently sitting at 40 hours now from last christmas <laughs> it is unreal it just is curve just f- flattens out well peter whenever Absolutely. you decide to leave the uh the company you should make sure you take your pto well in advance so you don't end up like raj oh yep. absolutely all right peter let's hear the, your disgruntled moment of the week okay well uh for those that have been watching the show, uh, thank you. Uh, you probably noticed that all of us have had technical issues uh, pretty much every single episode because of our goddamn microphone. Ever since and we ever, ever since was, we started recording virtual, which has been about eight, six to eight episodes at this point. Yeah, so we have had issues with our audio for so long. But I was so lucky, and I escaped all of it. It was just Justin and Raj. Their mics would disconnect all the time. And now I have the red ring of death on my microphone. (laughs) It is not even connected. This thing is not on. We're using my MacBook audio. And I am so unbelievably pissed. Because for so long, I was like, "Um, at least I know my audio is going to be good. It's fine. But no. My microphone decided to die instantly. The second we hit the record button, dies. I go to check it manually set it as the input it just disappears it's like fully plugged into my computer and it it just says no it's not connected go f- yourself like so happy i love this audio program so much i hope they sponsor this just so i can tell them how much their product is terrible please fix <laughs> your cables <laughs> but i would appreciate the sponsorship I I I'll I'll be honest. I'd be a little immoral for a sponsorship. Do I like your product? No. Will you sponsor me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. My description. I wouldn't. I would. I would just start screaming at him. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. My disgruntled moment of the week is fireworks. Um, I'm not a big firework guy to begin with. Also, happy July Fourth. Anyone who's listening, this will either come out on July Fourth or July Fifth. More likely July. Happy 5th. to those that celebrate. Yep. And. Um, it's not quite January uh, 6th, but 
what we that's what we have. Um, okay. Oh my god. Bro. But oh, okay. <laughs> but, so I not a big firework enjoyer, but it is what it is, whatever. I'm I'm on my run this morning, you know, just got one headphone in the ear, you know, um just cruising along and all of a sudden I start hearing something go off and I live in a pretty rural area, so I figure it's a gun. So with my head on a swivel, I kind of start wondering if I need to like book it out and like duck <laughs> because, you know, being in a city, you got to keep your head, especially when you're running on a swivel a little bit more. You never know who you're going to run into. Um, like you make sure you listen a little bit more, keep your eyes open here. I don't really need to do that. But in that moment where the fireworks that were going off that sounded like gunshots, I was like, oh, no, I'm cooked. Um, I've had, I've had this moment before. There was one time I think I just talked about on the podcast where a car came by and it was making the popping sound, and I was like, "Oh no, yep. I'm I'm I'm, yep. I'm a goner." Um, so I actually think that was right before we recorded a podcast episode, like on my way over. Um, yeah. but so it scared the crap out of me today. Um, learned it was fireworks. Realized it was July third, and that's what it was. But for for a half a second, I thought that my that I was gonna die of gunfire in my small rural town after living in the city for four years so that was going to be the reason yep that was going to be it wasn't living in pittsburgh not going to south side no it was just you running in your rural it's town not, it's not getting it's shot not, by it's hillbilly. not living in center city philly it's not being in pittsburgh <laughs> yeah. for four years. It, it was rural new jersey it was always rural rural, it was new, rural jersey. new jersey yeah don't ask what's going on in the pine barrens please <laughs> Anyway, that's this gruntled moment of the week, our f- favorite segment as always. But now we are going to get into the first of our NFL division breakdowns for the 2024-2025 season. Um, today we are starting with the NFC East. Now a disclaimer before we go into everything. We are not predicting exact win totals today. Um, that requires no. actually looking at every single game and making sure you allot the appropriate amount of wins. And none of us want to sit here and say, we predict this team is going to get this number of wins when we haven't calculated it for the entire league. You will get those numbers before the season starts, but I'm not going to have anybody look at a fool today. However, we are going to give our (laughs) predictions and kind of what we expect for the teams. Also, a disclaimer, we haven't talked about football in a long time or the draft. So if we're a little bit rusty, if we have to work into things, (laughs) you know, Give us a break. We've been talking about the NBA. No. Comment immediately. Trash us. I want to see absolute pitchforks, torches in the comments. That's what we want. So you say. You know what? <laughs> what, what do they say? Any press is good press? <laughs> exactly. Um, so we are starting with the NFC East today. Um, we have a Giants fan in Peter and two Eagles fans in Raj and myself. Um, unfortunately, two guests declined to be on the podcast today because one wanted overtime and one wanted to go to the pirates game so um they will be joining <laughs> on other segments so it was just us three today but that'll be good because we are all fans of these teams so unfortunately we have to start with the team that nobody actually wants to talk about which is the dallas cowboys Boo! Uh, the dallas cowboys have for a while now been making the playoffs had good seasons um and they enter this year with I think probably similar expectations. I don't know where you guys feel their expectations are for the year. Um, they haven't changed the core of their roster, but I feel like they've been in a spot where they have just continually been slipping in terms of like the talent on their team. Yeah. I mean, it. last year's pantsing by the Packers, I think really kind of put in perspective like what their ceiling is realistically at this point, I think their ceiling is an NFC championship game. Um, I don't think that they are Super Bowl contenders at this point. Obviously, during the season, players could show up, new rookies on the team, uh, new players that they added in the offseason. Oh, wait, they didn't add anybody. Um, but <laughs> I think they could easily... They, class. Re- exactly. Like They could change that narrative, but at this point, I don't know if they got anything else in the tank besides an NFC championship game because they haven't changed at all. And the way it's looking, it looks like CD lamb is going to start holding out. Um, cause they haven't offered him like the monster extension that he wants. So who knows? Also, Micah Parsons is beefing with one of his corners because the corner called him out for doing a podcast. I don't know what's going on in Jerry world, but 
they got some stuff they need to figure out. Yeah, the Cowboys are forever in parity right now. The zone where they're good enough to make the playoffs, but they're not good enough to p- make it anywhere past a second or a conference game. So um, I've seen them not make any crazy big moves. I mean, hey, they re-signed Zeke and their long snapper. Yep. And they That's got, good. I think they got Eric Kendricks, I think. The older Ooh. linebacker, I think. Oh, another fossil. Yes, on the team. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. So, the Cowboys, I mean, I said it last season after the pantsing by the Packers. I said, McCarthy or Dak, one of them is gone. <laughs> and I thought it was going to be McCarthy, but I guess not. Yeah. So, um... Yeah, I guess this is the last season we're going to see the McCarthy uh, Dak duo. I think well, there's no way Jerry Jones and this senile ass will sit there and say, hey guys, let's run it back one more time. I'm sure it will work. No shot. Uh, CD's nuts wants to leave the team. Mike, Mike has been eyeing up going back to Philly forever now. <laughs> yeah, I think. Bro, oh bro, wants to come back so badly. He's just gonna keep. He, he's, he is repressing it so Gosh, much. I think you're setting up like the perfect narrative for what the Cowboys are this year, which I feel like the whole entire year it's just gonna be a conversation of can Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott and CD Lamb kind of and Micah on the defensive end be enough to like carry this team into the playoffs or a Super Bowl, and then when the season ends we're all gonna be like, oh, it was never clearly enough, and then they're gonna have to do this whole entire off season where they fire their coach they wonder if they're going to keep the quarterback they don't know if their star players are actually happy and then it is likely they will repeat the exact same thing the next year um because yeah. yep welcome to parody we're, we're not nothing about the cowboys fundamentally has changed over the years they've changed coaches they've changed coordinators but the uh, so a lot of their offensive line guys are the same their quarterback is the same um they've lost talent at the running back position a lot of their key defense. They lost talent at the receiver position. Yep. They lost Amari Cooper for nothing. Because they're pay they're paying some of their star players like a Demarcus Lawrence, um, a Micah Parsons, um, Trevon Diggs, who was obviously hurt last year. Um, like they're paying these guys. They can't pay the other people, but it's not necessarily enough. Um, I'm ac- I'm really low on the Cowboys this year. Um, I won't say whether or not I think they can make the playoffs or not. I'd have to like it's going to be close. Um, I'm leaning towards potentially them not making the playoffs, although I don't think they have that hard of a schedule. Um, Dallas will burn if they don't make the playoffs. <laughs> I think their their defense is the best in the division. I think they edge out the uh, uh, Eagles' division defense just a little bit, um, but their de- their defense is very good, and I think they can carry them a little bit. Again, Trevon Diggs wasn't playing last year, and they still had really key guys like Deron Bland step up for their team. So I think that's gonna carry over well into next year micah parsons seems to just be playing edge now and not playing linebacker which should be good which is better for him yeah Yeah. better for him i think probably better for the defense too just to have that like you said they signed eric kendricks um who will play linebacker so you can kind of just have more set roles there demarcus lawrence is going to be demarcus lawrence um you're getting another year of mozzie smith on the team so all that type of stuff is very good but my problem is with the offensive side of the ball um i also think cd lamb's the best receiver in the division but after that, yeah. there's a, an extreme lack of talent. And like you're going to rely really heavily on a Tyler Guyton, rookie out of Oklahoma, to play a huge role in that yeah. offensive line for you. Now, he might be great. Um, but if he's not, if he struggles a little bit, suddenly, like Tyler Smith's great on the left side, but like you got Brock Hoffman, Zach Martin's getting up in there in age, Terrence Steele. Like, their offensive line's good but I don't think they're great. And then you're just like Jake Ferguson had a good year, but is he going to repeat that? And then it's kind of CD lamb. And then the corpse of Brandon cooks and is Turpin good. Like I don't think they have a lot of top end talent. And of course we just talk, talked about the running back position. It's Ezekiel Elliott to induce Vaughn. And that's about, oh, and, that's, and that's about it. And Zeke isn't the running back. He was a bunch of years ago. So they're going to have, I think honestly, like, not much of a running threat. And then we'll have to see what Dak Prescott is like. Dak Prescott's obviously a good player, but is he a difference maker? We'll need to see. Like really this, like Dak is gambling on himself this year uh, because he, the Cowboys and him didn't figure out a new extension. 
and he is essentially going to test free agency after this year. So if he has a down year, he's kind of screwed because then Dallas yep. can just either try to trade for or draft a new quarterback. And of course, then if he balls out this year, he has a great year, then that screws Dallas over again because then they have to pay him or they're going to lose him to another team who could then use a quarterback. Yeah, I'm looking at their schedule. I'm not I'm not feeling too confident about the Cowboys this year. Um, oh, quick God. walk through. They play the Browns in week one. That's not going to be an easy game. Um, Saints will win. Rav- Amari Cooper is torturing that team. <laughs> Ravens are going to lose. They'll probably beat the Giants. They'll, they'll play the Steelers. Again, I think that will be a close game. I think those are very similar teams. Lions, I think they'll lose. Niners, I think they'll lose. Falcons, they could lose. Eagles, they could lose. Texans, they could lose. Commanders, they'll beat Giants again. I think they'll be. I think they'll go three and four against the Giants and Commanders. So like one of those games, yeah. they play the Bengals. They'll lose. They'll beat the Panthers. The Bucks. We'll see what they what they have left in the tank. They could. I think they'll win that game. Though they play the Eagles again, I think they'll probably lose to the Eagles twice. And then Commanders. Like I, I don't see a ton of wins on the roster. So uh, on the the schedule for for the Dallas Cowboys, I don't. I do like the defense, and I think they'll be good. <laughs> but I, I really don't like the offense is the big thing. And that's really what Dallas has kind of been hanging their hat on for the past couple of years. It's like, oh, they got a great offense, mm-hmm. and then their defense is like very opportunistic where it's like, oh, well, if our offense can get the other team on the back on like their heels, they're going to be passing it a lot more. Michael Parsons can rush the quarterback. Trayvon Diggs can get under it, intercept the, uh, the ball. Or Deron Bland can also intercept it. So it's like, that's kind of like the combo. But when one of those doesn't work, they're kind of screwed. Because if they're put on the back foot, they cannot hang and shoot out. They can only win in like kind of like bigger leads. I haven't really seen them like come back a lot. It's no. more of just like they they win games by dominating them, and if they can't do that, they don't win. So you know what? We'll we'll see what the Cowboys can figure out. Personally, I think I speak for all of us in saying that we hope that Dallas burns and they win zero games next year um, in of one course. of the weaker quarterback classes coming out. So yeah, uh, I, mean, I, I think it, I think it's it, going to be interesting. I think it'd be great for the sport if the Cowboys were bad. Um, from a personal level, Honestly. that'd be great. And then from a sport level, I think you could see some shake up there. They're obviously the most followed sports team um, in the NFL. And if they're bad, there's going to be a lot of shakeups at the top. And that could be really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. So the question is, if you had to make a prediction on kind of where they'll end up for the year, um, where do you think they'll go? I'm going to go a wild card round loss slash they missed the playoffs by one game. That's kind of where I'm leaning towards right now. They'll either be a first round playoff exit or they'll just miss the playoffs narrowly. Okay. I think they're not going to make the playoffs this season. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I'm going, I'm coming crazy. I'll, I'll give them divisional round loss. I'll give them a divisional round loss. Mike McCarthy still gets axed because he lost to the playoffs again. So I'll give that to him. I'll, I I do think they're not going to look as good as they have in the past. I don't know if I'm that low on the Cowboys yet. I could be convinced, though. All right, I'm going to quickly pull up, see if I can get the win totals for them. Oh, pulling up the draft, or draft. Uh, I was thinking draft kings. <laughs> no, this isn't sponsored, I swear. The, uh, the odds for, like, the over-unders. It looks like this was done in April 2nd. I don't love that. Let me try to pull up FanDuel real quick. Yeah, see if they have like a post draft like odds. Raj, what are we thinking their odds are looking like over under? Are we thinking like what? 10 and a half, 11 and a half gains? Oh, for wins? Yeah. I think last time I checked, I think it was 10 and a half. 10 and a half. That's what I think it is too, but I feel like 10 and a half is like. It's a lot of wins. Let me check. On I mean, spot not spot. really. It's like it's only yeah. a couple games over five hundred. Ten and a half. I mean, you yeah. if you win eleven games. That's a great season. But the, the what? So you have six losses. That means you would only 
You'd only be like three or four games over 500. I mean, not a lot right? of teams win 13, 14 games. Like, that's... Uh, you know what? That's a good point, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go... If we can't oh, find we got it... The Cowboys at- Cowboys at nine and a half on nah, ESPN. I hate that. See, that's a good line. There's a, okay. The, honestly, the, <laughs> there's a lot of good lines. If you look at the betting totals, um, it, it frustrates me because it means you can't just like rob people off money. Um, <laughs> you can't rob Vegas. That's crazy how like yeah, it's crazy how you can't just like rob Vegas on stuff. Um, Unbelievable. I, I'll say under nine and a half. Under nine and a half. What? So you're saying like nine? Yeah, they're either gonna go eight and nine or nine and eight or something like that. Oh, okay, okay. That's that's fair. I could see that. I could see that. I'll give them Cowboys are. I'll give them ten wins. Maybe eleven if I'm feeling frisky. I think we're gonna win ten games. There we go. All right. But let's see. Cowboys plus eighteen hundred to win the Super Bowl. Wait, didn't we say we weren't going to do wins? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we're just like, oh, no. We were saying predictions. We're, we're we were saying instant, like actual yeah, predictions. We're giving an instant yeah, reaction yeah, yeah. To, to what we're feeling. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I was like, wait. <laughs> we just contradicted ourselves. No, like instant reaction. Oh, okay. We'll actually come out with an, a, a, yes. an official predicted, like. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Of like what games they will lose and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. I see. I see. They're plus 150 to win the East right I mean, now. Okay. I mean, in terms of Super That's not terrible odds. In terms of the Super Bowl with the Cowboys. I feel like they have a oh my extremely low chance to win the Super Bowl. They're currently sitting at the tied for the eighth best odds to win the Super Bowl. Feels a little bit right to me. I'd probably put a team like the Packers and pro- maybe even the Jets ahead of them. Um, but I, I think they virtually have no shot to make win the Super Bowl. A lot of things would have to go right, and I think they'd have to have a lot of things break their way in terms of like the Eagles, the Lions, the 49ers all kind of like being bad to even get to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And then you would have to hope that the Chiefs and the Ravens and the didn't Ravens, get you out. Yeah. Like they, I don't think they'd be favored yeah. in almost any single playoff matchup, any of the rounds. So they'd have to do a lot to get there. But Yeah, unless they were in like the wild card against like some random team that snuck in. But yeah. That I, I really couldn't see them be favored against. They wouldn't be favored against the Eagles. They wouldn't be favored against the Lions. They wouldn't be favored against the 49ers. They might not even be favored against the Packers, like realistically. Yeah, especially if you have some uh, ideas com- kind of coming from the, uh, like, if you have the whole season to build up to it, what do, what do they look like at that point? Yeah. And that, that'll be a lot of it for the Cowboys, how they look. Um, their yeah. first game of the season is against the Browns as I mentioned earlier and they are underdogs in that game so um, it'll be a tough challenge for them to start off the season they're on the road in Cleveland so actually that's Tom Brady's first game he's calling that's gonna be fire that game's gonna be so good yeah damn all right that was a lot on the Cowboys let's move on here to the Washington Commanders who completely irrelevant feel (laughs) feel irrelevant Um, they have an irrelevant team in a relevant field um a terrible well used to have a terrible owner um and so they come into the year with i mean let's the biggest question is their quarterback and that's about the only thing that matters for them for this i feel like for the season like yeah. you get the quarterback and you can play well um like jaden J- daniels can be that guy it doesn't almost matter what else you do like if he comes out of yeah. this if you come out of this year saying this guy can play NFL caliber quarterback for us for 10 years. Then you're like, we had a great year. That's how, that's how I, that's what I think their expectations are. Can like, can we just get the quarterback? Yeah. right? Yeah. Cause like realistically they could go four and thir- 13 again, but if Jaden Daniels has a good season and like shows a lot of promise, it's like, I don't care. Like they did what they needed to do. They showed that like, look, this wasn't a mistake. Jaden Daniels is our quarterback of the future. We're not going to screw this up. Like we can move forward knowing like, look, we at least have like a leader. We have a guy that we can build our team around. And, and I will say, I will compliment the commanders. They did have a good draft uh, this past, uh, this past draft class. They were able to get, um, what is it? Jerison Newton uh, from Illinois. He was one of the def- uh, better uh, defensive tackles coming yeah. out. They got him like late in the second round. Really good pickup for them because they lost a lot of key that, pieces was, on defense. That was the guy with the first round grade. 
yeah, easily a first round grade. They got him at pick 36. Um, so I guess not late second round, uh, actually early second round, but still like very surprised that he even fell out of that, um, out of the first round because they lost Chase Young, who was kind of a bum anyway. Yeah. I don't even, what, what, what team is he playing for now? I he don't know. Somewhere. He left the Niners. He, he signed somewhere. Somebody please Some look that up. I even... feel like I'm losing my mind. No, don't tell me Tennessee. Please don't tell me you went to Tennessee. Don't you dare say that. Anyway, but then Montez Sweat, uh, the who Saints. is actually Saints. a very good Saints. Oh my God, what are we doing? Anyway, um, Montez Sweat, uh, he actually was a very good like edge rusher, defensive end, goes to the Bears. He uh, led both the Commanders and Bears in sacks this past season, which is a ridiculous stat. It's nuts. But uh, it really is. So they, they really need to shore up the defensive line. They, at least defensively, they have a lot of young guys. Uh, Emmanuel Forbes needs to pick it up this next year. Uh, AJ Brown is his father. Like, it was <laughs> bad. Like, it, like, it, because he, it looks like through photos that people like saw of him like at like a camp or something that he looks like he got even smaller. Oh god! Which was his knock coming in yeah, I... was that he came in playing at like maybe 175 pounds, and to be smaller than that, I get it. Oh, it's like speed kills, whatever. As a corner in this league, you need to have some sort of size. You can't just be tiny like that. Because you're going to get bully balled by these bigger receivers. And Even by these smaller receivers, they'll have enough strength to easily get by you. I mean, just so if you just go for the best receivers in the... I mean, you got Malik Neighbors who could torture you for years to come. You've got A.J. Brown, who's a monster. And then C.D. Lamb, who's an yeah. arguable top five receiver in the league. Like these aren't, exactly. these aren't guys you can just be like, oh, I'm not at my best. That's okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's going to be really interesting there. Granted, they did get... Uh, they got Bobby Wagner on their team for some reason. Um, I guess he's going to help. Uh, I, I get adding a veteran. They have Jonathan to the Allen team, too. But they do have Jonathan Allen still on there, even though he has said he doesn't want to be on that team so many times, and I feel so bad for him. Oh, God. But I think, I think you're right, Justin. I think as long as Jane Daniels does well, all is well that ends well, but... It is going to be slightly concerning if some of these younger guys don't start taking steps forward because, like, you're going to then continue to keep rebuilding and you need some other cornerstones outside of Gene Daniels to actually start stepping up. Um, they do have, uh, like, Terry McLaurin, great receiver. Jahad Dotson, very underrated yep. receiver. He's got weapons. There's no doubt that Jane Daniels has weapons. His offensive line, kind of dookie. Kind of a little concerned about that. This is going to be another RG3 situation, but we'll see. That, that's really what we'll leave it at, I guess. Yeah. Raj, any opinions? Um, <laughs> It's going to be great to see if Austin Eckler is even Oh, still. I forgot about yeah. him. I forgot he was I was, was waiting for roster. someone to talk about my favorite peanut-looking head, dude. <laughs> Oh boy, what can I say about Austin Eckler, former number one or two pick in fantasy, turned to <laughs> monster in PPO, but like with Jaden Daniels, who is a running QB, I don't think Austin Eckler is going to do much. He's just yeah. going to be a veteran running back that's just going to be washed on that team. Because they also have Brian Robinson, who's a very solid running yeah, back. Yeah, I think Brian, Ro Brian He's not like great by any means, but he's just like very he's solid. He's good. Like, it, I, B yeah. Rob's good. B Rob's a menace. He is a menace. He did get shot twice and came back before um, yep. somebody. I forget who. Ben oh, Simmons, what was his name? Uh, Michael Allen Thomas. Thomas. Michael Thomas. Oh, it was Keenan Allen and Michael Thomas. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Um, but, Good yeah. Lord. I forgot about Austin. The, Vi uh, the commies, Dan Snyders, whatever they're called now. The Dan they're Snyders? Gonna be, um, they're going to be um, – they're either going to be pretty okay or pretty ass. Yeah. No in between. Yeah. Yeah. I, Their ceiling is like mid, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. But their floor is super low. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think there was this narrative before that, like, oh, okay, they have some talent on their team. They could, you know, sneak their way in. I just don't I just don't see the route for that. Um I don't think Jaden Daniels is gonna have um the easiest transition to the league. I think he could be good, don't get me wrong, but I don't think he's mm -hmm. like gonna come in and just start playing amazing football um his offensive line i don't know much about but 
the fact that I don't know much about them means they're probably not much more than mid. Um, yeah. And you'll have to see like Terry McLaurin. It'll be interesting just to see like he's been dealing with a lot on that team for the last couple of years, just not being that good. Yeah. So like, does he start like getting a little disgruntled, want to get out of there? Um, like you said, Jahan Dotson's very good. Like I don't mind their skill position players all that much. I like Brian Robinson a lot. Eckler is like a second running back slash first down back isn't terrible. Um, they of course drafted our favorite quarterback, Sam Hartman. Um, how we could- oh, the Pookie Bear that looked like that. he was <laughs> he was shell shocked in the ACC championship. Oh yeah, my for god! Anyone, uh, obviously, we're from Pitt, and uh, he was Wake Forest quarterback when we won the ACC championship. And there's just a funny video of him holding the phone, uh, talking. It's like, please send help. He has like he literally has like a thousand yard stare after he got picked off for like a third time, yep. and he's just like. <laughs> And you know his offense coordinator on the other do? end is like, what are you doing? You're terrible, man. <laughs> oh, he faked the slide. <laughs> Sauce time. So, yeah, for for the commanders, just like if you get through the year and Jaden Daniels is good, Terry McLaurin's happy on your team, and Jazar Newton and Emmanuel Forbes grow and are good, then I think you could leave that year and just be like, yep, we're good. We're good. Yeah. You're, if you're on the right track, it's a good year. Yep. Absolutely. Outlook for them. I guess it's just they're not making the playoffs. No, they're not making the playoffs. I'd say their they're ceiling is the like playoffs. seven, is what? Just under mid. So what? Like, oh, yeah, because you can't go uh, eight and eight anymore. So I guess like eight and eight nine, and nine yep. something like that. What do you think the win total is at on and betting? So. Six or seven and a half. It's six and a half. Raj, what do we think? It's six and a half. Yep, six and a half. Oh. Well, Justin just said it. I was about to look <laughs> it up. Yeah. Six and a half. <laughs> um, if I was betting on that line, I'd probably lean towards the under, not looking at their schedule. But yeah, that's because I don't think I like that. I don't think they're going to get either games against the Eagles. I think they'll probably get one game against the Giants and the Cowboys. And so they're just going to have a lot of division. Nah, the Giants beat them twice every year and then lose to some horrible team. The Giants <laughs> will beat them twice forever. Well, if the Giants beat them twice, I, I still think they'll get one game off the Cowboys. But, I mean, if you if you lose yeah. five games in division, then it's gonna it's really going to be an uphill battle, no matter in the circumstance. Oh, yeah. So, that's mm-hmm. the Commanders. Um, Absolutely. Not much really to add just because they're so far down the list of NFL relevancy for this upcoming year. Yeah. But I hope... Uh, They're just still rebuilding. I hope so. for their team, Jaden Daniels is very good. Um, yes. Want to make that very clear. We all do hate the Commanders. Not, I mean, not even really. They've just been kind of irrelevant in our lifetime. But I do hope that Jaden Daniels does well. He's a very likable guy. I just really hope he doesn't get the RG3 treatment because I'm really scared about this organization. My man, to, my man needs to learn how to duck from these hits. After those oh hits, my highlights God. I saw... He needs to learn how to just go well, down. Actually a cute... It looks like he's getting hit by a train every time he gets tackled. Yeah, and I, I mean, keep... <laughs> now all the feet, Jaden Daniels getting... Where, do you guys remember that one highlight where you tried to hurdle someone yeah. who got absolutely killed? Well, yeah, because the thing is, it's like, look, you can get away with that in college, but you like when Dexter Lawrence is coming up the middle and you try to hurdle him, he is going to powerbomb you through the turf. Like, please don't do that. Um, a key part for the team I just didn't we didn't talk about is I mean the whole entire coaching staff is new. Dan Quinn, head coach, Cliff Kingsbury, oh, yeah, offensive coordinator, Joe Witt, defensive coordinator. So again, if you have those guys in place that are good and they feel like they can do something with that going forward, you're good. But again, if you have to fire the OC after one year and then Dan Quinn isn't good and oh is it, like and you just go through this whole entire like charade again, then it's it's gonna be a terrible year. So in yeah. all of this though, yeah. I think we can really just hope they replace FedEx Field. They just need to blow that, that thing up and get a new one. Like they need to nuke that thing from orbit. It it is so cursed. They must have done like some. They stole that from Native Americans or something like that. Because like that place is cursed. It's been cursed since they've moved there. <laughs> now, Peter, it's time to talk about your New York yes. Football Giants, um, a team My that York has been in the news a little bit more recently because of some hard yes. because of some hard knock stuff. So yes, let's talk absolutely. about them, and I'll just let you take the mic. 
Yeah. Um, so kind of a bigger off season for them. Uh, they really have kind of almost shed the old guard of the, dare I say, Dave Gettleman era of players. Um, I, that name uh, really brings that's a cr- shiver down my that's spine. That's just crazy because Dave Gettleman feels like so long ago. Yeah, exactly. W man's honestly. I yeah, love he, Gettleman. Yeah, you love Gettleman, exactly. <laughs> um, so they let Saquon Barkley go in free agency. Uh, it's It sucks seeing him go. But again, it's running back is a luxury position. It's an if you can have an incredible top tier running back, it really brings a new dimension to the offense. But the, where the Giants are at, they just couldn't afford to pay somebody like Saquon at that position. But they could pay somebody like Brian Burns at the edge rusher position because that is a much more like valuable position in the modern NFL. And actually, Justin, what you're talking about that Hard Knocks clip that came out was. Um, the Panthers general manager who was like kind of like joking around with uh, Joe Shane, the Giants uh, general manager. And he goes like, Oh, you want, what do you want? Burns for two ones. And Joe Shane's like, no, (laughs) but now we're talking. And which is hilarious because the, the Rams had offered two first round picks to the Panthers last year for Brian Burns that they denied. They didn't mm-hmm. give that up for him, which is insane. But yeah, the Giants got him for like a second and a fifth and then paid him. But very happy that the Giants are investing in the defense because I think that's just kind of the way they got to go because their offense is very young overall. Invest in the defense, get some guys out there. They had a pretty good draft class, got Malik Neighbors, got a true number one receiver in him. Uh, they t- got Tyler time. Newbin. Exactly. Finally, thank God. Uh, they got uh, Tyler Newbin. Uh, they drafted. Uh, he's a safety out of Minnesota to then try to replace Xavier McKinney, who again, safety is a luxury position. Giants could afford a sixty-eight million dollar contract for a safety, so they let him walk. He goes to the Packers. I hope he does very well over there. Um, but I think the Giants are scarily I think in a good spot because they've really kind of like they've changed their identity they've found key players in free agency like Bobby Okereke who's been like an anchor on that defense so good. they got a young guy like it's so good um, Micah McFadden has come up very well as a run stopping linebacker um, Deontay Banks had a very good or not very good but like he had a very solid rookie season as a corner um I believe they're going to be shifting Cordero Flott, who they had in the slot, then out uh, the, to be the other boundary corner. So they they have a lot of guys developing on defense and on offense that are overall very young. The one player that I did want to kind of highlight out of this draft, though, was Tyrone Tracy uh, Jr. out of Purdue. He's a running back. And strangely enough, he might end up taking the starting job from Devin Singletary by the end of the year. I'm going to put that out there. It wouldn't take much. Because see, seeing tape from him, he so he's a converted wide receiver into a running back because he's just like, get him the ball and he does well. So I think the Giants might have gotten a sleeper in him. At least I hope so, of course. But I think the Giants overall are in a good spot. And of course, the success of this season all lays on the shoulders of of one Daniel Jones, yep. who is on the final year of his guaranteed money on his contract after this year. The Giants can literally just cut him from the roster and have zero dead cap space. Um, so this, this season's really all on him. They've beefed up the offensive line very aggressively in free agency. They have brought in a new offen- uh, offensive line coach from the Raiders who has not had a offensive line group that is under like mid like he has been like the 15th ranked 11th 7th and 9th i believe every time he's been an offensive line coach so they got a ton of guys in free agency they drafted or drafted they signed basically an entire new offensive line they signed five guys at every single position so this if there was a time for daniel jones to finally figure it out it's now and if not shoot him into the moon we'll wait one year and go get arch manning (laughs) raj 
Oh boy, where do I begin with my favorite team, the New York Giants? Oh man, I love Daniel Jones, and I love Dave Gettleman, and I love what the team's been doing for the last few years. You know, it makes life good for the division. But in all honesty, the Giants are on the come up, I guess. It's like the yeah. rebuild's slowly happening now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I will admit, when you guys gave Daniel Jones all that money, I felt like that might have been the biggest mistake that team has ever made. Absolutely. Uh, he had one win. He had one win. Andy season took you guys to the playoffs. Thank you for being the Vikings. Yeah, that was great. And then after that, I mean, yeah, it all went to from there. Yep. But yep. I mean, Daniel, like I've been saying for a while now, Daniel Jones will not be the starter by week five, maybe week four. Drew Locke will take over. Mr. Drew Locke could be showing up. He's already an eagle killer. I mean, hey, maybe we got our guy. Let's see. Giants schedule. Let's see your first few games. That's not looking good. It's it's not a good schedule. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Vikings, that's going to be a close game because I still have zero faith in J.J. McCarthy. I don't think he's going to be starting. I think it's Sam Darnold. Oh, oh, okay. Sam Darnold. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, you know, this game might be close. It might be a blowout. Who knows? Uh, Giants commies. That's going to be interesting. We own them. Yeah. So then Browns, you guys are going to get Molly whopped. Uh, Cowboys probably going to get Molly whopped. Yep. Seahawks, same thing. Yep. Then Bengals, then Eagles. Yeah. Your first few weeks are not good. They're rough. It's a rough couple of first weeks. <laughs> I say Daniel Jones will be the starter by what, you mean Daniel Jones. Oh, whoa, whoa, Drew Locke, either against the Seahawks or the Bengals. Former team, line up Drew Locke to go out there and beat the Seahawks. I like it. I know the script writer as well. For Daniel's sake, though, I hope if he does get benched as early as you're saying, that it's because he's bad at his job and not because he's dealing with injury, playing through it. Like, I at least want for his sake and for the Giants, for the league's sake, that like by the end of the, have a best by shot the, end of the year, we say, you know, Daniel Jones, you had your shot. You either succeeded or you failed, but it wasn't because of like, Exactly. Like imagine if he hurts himself and he misses four or five games in the year early, can't really find a groove, then he comes back late in the season when they already know they can't make the playoffs, and then it's kind of irrelevant football. And then we're kind of like, oh, wait, so can the Giants find anyone better than Daniel, Daniel Jones? Like it just will, I don't want it to be exactly. ambiguous by the end. Yeah, it, mm -hmm. we need a definite answer. Like, can he play or not? Ambiguity was exactly what happened last year with, with his injury and with how mm -hmm. the team was playing and the lack of receiver help. It was just like, no one really knows if this guy can play quarterback or not. Um, yeah. And that's not good for the league. That's not good for a team. That's not good for the player and his, like, stuff going forward. So, what else, Raj? Yeah? Yes. Um, I mean... My expectations for the Giants probably just going to be mediocre again. A yeah. win for the Giants would be finishing over 500 this season in oh, my eyes. Absolutely, with a like this. if they go if they go nine and eight this year, I would be so I would be unbelievably happy. And nine and eight could be a potential playoff spot. You never That's know. That's like a when, seventh round, yeah, uh, or seventh yeah, round, seventh, like a seventh, seventh, yeah, seventh pick or not pick, uh, seventh seed. Uh, seed. Yeah, well, I think. Nine and eight, I think nine and eight would be a win for the Giants. Even eight and eight, I would say anywhere in the realm of six, seven, eight, or nine wins is a win. As long as you guys don't only get three wins this season. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think for the for the Giants, what's super exciting if you're a Giants fan is they've got some up front, especially they have some really talented players that they can go to. Like the front of that mm -hmm. defense is legit with Dexter Lawrence, Brian Burns, Jordan Phillips, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau's still been playing good. I feel like people don't talk about him a lot. Um, Kind of like came in the draft. I think he's been playing really, very well. Um, he had a good year last year. He's very. He's had a very quiet yeah. like couple seasons, but like he's been better each season, and that's what also drives me insane about Giants fans is that he comes in, doesn't immediately play like Lawrence Taylor, and they're like, "He's a bust. Get him out of here." It's like he's like twenty two years old. Can well, we take yeah, a breath? We talked about we talked <laughs> about Kayvon. Like Kayvon was this like number one out of high school, number one in college, yeah. had a bad year at Oregon. Uh, fell in the draft. I think he ended up getting picked five or something like that. And then yep. um, now in the league, he kind of started off slow, but he's actually been pretty good. Like he's been good to solid as an NFL player. He's just not been great. And people kind of forgot about him. Yeah. Um, Bobby O'Karake, as mentioned earlier, has been good. Tyler Newbin, safety is a luxury position. Um, solid guy from Minnesota. Um, Antonio Whitfield come in and do Winfield and do great. 
So I, I think Newby can yeah. totally follow that path. And then Deontay Banks going in a second year. Um, like I think there are opportunities for this defense to actually be really solid, especially up front. And that could cause problems, and we'll see how the offense goes. The offense is kind of going to depend on Daniel Jones. And yep. you hope that Malik Neighbors is good in his first year. And, I mean, let's get Malik Neighbors, Jalen Hyatt, um, Allen Robinson. Like I think you can start to – form some type of okay wide receiver core there. Um, yeah. Tight end position, not great for y'all, but. Um. Well, Dane Bellinger has been, he's been a solid tight end, not as a pass catcher, but as a run blocker, actually. He's actually been really good at that. Um, then they just recently drafted Theo Johnson out of Penn State, who's kind of like that more, like almost like Travis Kelsey style, where it's like he's a tight end, but like he's much more of like a pass yeah. catcher versus a blocker. So I think they might have like a good kind of two tight end set there. But of course, we need to see how he does because yeah. that's all up in the air. Yeah. But thank God Darren Waller's off my <laughs> team. Good riddance. You mean famous rapper Darren Waller who raps about Kelsey Plume leaving him? Yeah, literally. Oh my god, bro. Get a get a day job. What, Good lord. What a legendary track. Um <laughs> So yeah, I think I it's again kind of similar with the commander. It's like this is just the Daniel Jones season. Like is he good? Yep. Can he play football? And if not, then the season was for nothing. Um but there's a lot of things to be yep. excited about. The Vegas win totals have them this line at six and a half. What are our instant thoughts on that? I think, I think they're going to either... I think it's good. I think they're going to get 6, 7. 8 and 9 is a huge win. I would... I would put them at 6 wins, but I think some of them are going to be like very close games that they lose that kind of could go either way. Yeah. I... I Because the funny... I think they might go over. Sorry, I cut you off. No, you're, yeah. you're good. Over? Wow. Okay. Well, because I think it, it was just kind of funny because... The I remember I was talking to uh, one of our other friends who's a Giants fan. He was like, before this season, and he was like, oh, well, like, how do you think we're going to do this year? I'm like, I think it's going to be a down year this year because the, the year prior when the Giants made the playoffs, they kind of had everything sort of go their way. Like, they had some very close games that, like, they ended up winning. Like, the first game of the season, the Titans game, dude just shanked the yeah. kick at the end of the game to lose the game. Like they just had every single thing go right. And they made the playoffs. Like that was literally their ceiling that you watched. And then the next year we had everything go the wrong way. <laughs> and that was their floor. So I think this year it's going to start to even out a little bit more where like, yeah, some games are going to go their way. Other games won't, but it's going to be a much more accurate representation of what the giants really are. Yeah. I don't, I don't disagree. Disagree with that. I think, what we'll to see? Um, it, again, just all develops on like if Daniel Jones can be good and the league neighbors can be good, then I think they're in for a more successful season. Uh, hopefully, you see development from like, Evan Neal. Um, oh God, don't even say his name, please. I'm gonna have a heart attack. All right, it is time, Evan Neal, for the 2018 Super Bowl champions to be discussed. Oh God, here. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's just to reiterate Raj and I are Eagles fans um, and I'm feeling pretty good about this season but Raj I'll let you start off talking about the Philadelphia Eagles all right so I know we made some big moves this offseason um, we signed I don't know if anybody, he's a very underground running back you know very yeah, underrated he's, he's I'm not sure if really, really sneaky, heard of him. Good. sneaky yeah uh, his name is uh, Saquon Barkley he went to Penn State I don't know if many have heard of him um, yeah, we, we got him. I mean, he came from a division rival, which is strange, but I guess, Hey, welcome to Philadelphia, man. Um, I'm glad your daughter's finally going to be able to see a team win. Uh, that's nice. That's <laughs> off. But, um, I mean, what we got Bryce Huff in the off season, we extended Smitty, AJ Brown. We got back, um, CJ, CJ Garner, CJ GJ. Yeah. So weird to say that. Yeah. yeah we got really him is. back. Like, like an ex coming back to you that, it, that's like the, one of the strangest <laughs> signings in the offseason is Sydney Carter Jones yeah back. when I saw that he came back I'm like what did he just diss all of Philly yeah that yeah, was he apologized so we're good yeah which I mean at the end of the day like he wasn't wrong <laughs> like Philly fans kind of are insufferable but like that's like the point like I feel like but you yeah. guys know that <laughs> so it's like eh, whatever he's back 
Uh, what else? Um, we got uh, Kenny Pickett seven now. Yes. KP seven uh, took him from the Steelers for a, a pick or two. Um, he will be our backup QB. Uh, dare like say maybe pick. a Nick Foles pick or two is like a fifth round pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a shh, shh. Uh, so yeah, we got we got our guy, we got our pit boy, uh, Kenny Pickett on the Eagles yep. now, hometown hero. Yep. Uh, who else did we get? Oh, um, well, we ended up killing the draft this year. Yeah, you guys did. We got a uh, Cooper Dijon. Dijon. <laughs> His last name now Dijon. Oh, I see. I see. And we okay, got I see our. Doing. Yep. And Quinion Mitchell, a uh, great first and second. Uh, Michael was in shambles when he saw we took uh, Quinion. Oh, and yeah, then he was so mad. Just getting Cooper, they get Cooper Dijon right after. Everyone's like, well, "How does how we do it?" And yeah. I think it's simply just teams passed up on them. Yeah. He didn't do anything. I think he traded up in the second, maybe. He did. Um, there's uh, a cl- there's a clip yeah. of the draft room where literally he's like saying how they're not going to get Cooper Dijon because like these teams in front of him are going to pick, and he's kind of like. Well, I guess not. And then one team passes on him, and he goes, "Oh my god!" And then he just tra- trades up for the pick. Yeah. He trades up. He calls up. I think it's uh, Sean McVay. He's like, "This pick, this this pick, this give pick, me your pick now. now." And then like, yeah. okay, sure. And he's like slapping the table because he's so excited um, to get this yeah. pick. Yep. We got a uh, Jeremiah Trotter, senior son, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Yep. Welcome back. Uh, uh, th- uh, honestly, for those that don't know, former linebacker for the Eagles. Yes. His son now is playing linebacker for the Eagles. Yep. And Justin, I don't know if you saw it or if you saw the clip, Peter, but of uh, uh, Jeffrey Lurie calling him. That was yep. it. Was like because he Jeffrey saw him grow up basically. Yep. And he, like he was very really close to the family, so I'm like, okay, that's like we got that's the hometown awesome. kid coming back. That was like yeah. this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, and then awesome. let's see. Uh, Will Shipley is a running back yeah. for us now. We got I got a white that. running back. Let's go. We got a white corner, a white running back. Philadelphia's bringing back racism, baby. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Ooh, <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> yeah, anyways, um, yeah, and speaking of that, uh, we got a tough pick of Cooper DeJean and Reed Blankenship flexing oh, yeah. up in front of the Eagles logo in the oh, tunnel. God. Uh, uh, our social media team definitely knew yeah, what they, they were they doing with that picture. Doing. They know what they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. Um, trying to think, Justin. Any other offseason acquisitions I'm missing? No, not not that I can think of. Um, we we got the center, a late center from Wisconsin, very like Jason mm-hmm. Kelsey esque with the small size. So oh, probably, God, here we he go. probably won't play much this year. Um, but he, but he's an exciting guy to have back there, and maybe you know he develops into a. Star. Oh wait, you guys got rid of the uh, the domestic terrorist on offense. Oh, Brian Johnson. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, yeah, I'm, well, yeah. I, yeah, that, yeah well, we, all we all knew that was that's happening. happening. Uh, oh. I forgot we got um we got our boy Matt Hennessy. Oh yeah, on oh, our own line. <laughs> dude. Hennessy jerseys are gonna go crazy I, at yeah. the link this uh, year. All I know is the social they media team, the marketing team. They knew what they were doing. Um, just I, I mean, I'm just a big fan of what the six uh, the Eagles did this off season. Just I think they got every position of need. The only thing I would say that they probably missed out on the opportunity to do was to get veteran experience in their cornerback room to help supplement a bad mm-hmm. secondary, but the way they did that was just draft two really highly graded rookies. So mm-hmm. it might not be the smoothest first year in that specific position group, but I still think... But you guys still have Darius Slay and James Bradbury yeah. on the team, so yeah. it won't be that bad. Yeah. Um, and... Oh, oh, um, Justin, we got... Who's that linebacker from the Bucks Devin we White. took? Devin that's... Yeah. Devin, yeah, Devin, that's, yeah. So that's we, stuff I'm talking about with this team, like... It was like, oh, wow, the linebacking core is terrible. Okay, go out and get Devin White. Obviously, linebacking is still not a strength for the Eagles, but if Devin White can be good, he was not great last year. If he can be great two years ago, Devin White, then that's a huge pickup yeah. for the team that is going to solve mm-hmm. a big position of need. Um, if Absolutely. Slay can stay healthy this year, people forget about last year. He hurt himself in the, like, close to the end of the season. That's when they started to skid. They weren't able to get back that skid by the end of the season when he had come back. Um, if you... Can have Slay be good, Brad Berry to be serviceable, um, Sidney Gardner Johnson's good at his job, and then you can f- figure out the rest of the cornerback position with Kenyon, with Cooper Jagin. Safeties do work yep. there. Suddenly you start talking about, hey, 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 you forgot Reed. Okay. Um, but <laughs> say but, his and name. also Reed, Reed Blankenship. Um, Thank you. But I think the big thing with the Eagles that people aren't talking about is they got a lot better at those at the secondary position. 
And also, a lot of these young guys got to play last year. Keely Ringo, Eli Rick, Signe Brown for a little bit before he got injured. Um, all got to play. So now they're going to come in with a little bit more confidence, a little bit more experience. Now they're getting second team reps. Um, if somebody goes down, they'll be good and ready to go. So um, I'm, I'm pretty high on the Eagles. I, I think a lot of people, I think the national media has overvalued how much I love Jason Kelsey, but I think they've valued overvalued how much losing JC Kelsey will hurt. It's not, it's not going to be, it's not going to yeah. be like a crystal clear uh, transition. Obviously Jason Kelsey, Mm -hmm. Cam Jurgens is not going to be as good as K Jason Kelsey was, but I think people are like, oh, what are the Eagles going to do now? They don't have Jason Kelsey. And it's like, I don't know. They still have a top 10 <laughs> offensive line in the league. They still have a top three wide receiver room in the league, um, especially at the one, two position. Yeah. Um, they still have a quarterback who nearly won the MVP two years ago and the best running back in football. So um, with honestly a deep with Kenneth Gainwell backing them up and then a rookie and Will Shipley, like they've got a great running back room. I think they have a solid QB room. I don't love, I'm a notorious Kenny Pickett hater, but as a backup QB, he's fine. Um, there is no shot you are complimenting Kenny Pickett right now. I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> uh, this dude is huffing his own farts right now. You are so high on copium. You but yeah. want the you, you think the Eagles are going seventeen and zero? Like you you are complimenting Kenny Pickett. I never thought I'd see the day. I said no he's way. I said he's a good backup quarterback. I wouldn't call it much of a compliment. Um, <laughs> I don't care. That's still a compliment. <laughs> And then just like the offensive line, like the weakest position on the offensive line is going to be a right guard. We'll see how Tyler Steen does, but I think he'll be fine. Um, and otherwise, I'm just I'm just very high on I'm just high on the Eagles. I think they address the positions of need. Um, they mm -hmm. transit well. Again, the big thing will be there is how is their coaching, right? Like they get Kellen Moore in the offseason, they get Vic Fangio. They have Sirianni still there. If Sirianni is the guy, mm -hmm. if Kellen Moore is the guy, and Vic Fangio is the guy, I think the Eagles really have a good shot to win the Super Bowl this year. It's not. Yeah. It's not for lack of talent. Like the only no. question mark we have is the youth in the back of the secondary. Other than that, mm -hmm. I think it's like, how are these guys coached? What's the scheme? Can they go out and execute? And can Jalen Hurts be a good quarterback? Um, there, I thought I really think there were some weaknesses in his game last year. Call it injury, call it play calling, call it maybe some of his own problems. But this is your year to prove it. I don't think there's many rosters in the NFL that are better than the Eagles this year. Yeah. No, I, I agree. And um, I mean, oh no, go ahead. I was Let's just what the Giants have to say. Oh no, literally the the one thing I was going to say was you you really just like every season's kind of a roll of the dice with this. But you kind of alluded to this earlier. But you know, on paper, roster is incredible. You just got to pray injuries go your way. Like that's right. re that's really the kind of the big thing. This has always been Philadelphia's issue for like years now. Like it's always we're such like an injured team. Like. After the 2018 Super Bowl, Wentz goes down, Foles goes in, and we think, oh my god, it's going to happen again. Alshon Jeffrey drops, Saints game, whatever. Love with it. Next season, Wentz is healthy, but everyone else gets injured. And then after that, the team wasn't the same. We had a, a down year or two. And then we flip-flop. The Super Bowl run, everyone was healthy. Or the back to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. everyone was healthy. We just, James Bradbury happened in the end, and Patrick Mahomes is voodoo magic and whatever. <laughs> that happened and then a year after that injuries killed us again or coaching or whatever like it's always like we just have to be like healthy and hopefully our coaching staff is incompetent i love the kellen moore hire i've always been high on kellen moore i feel like on the chargers i don't know what happened there well there was just no I, that that roster was not as good as everybody said it was like yeah. i don't care what people say i was You're saying right. it i mean yeah, you're right. I was I was gassing up Kellen Moore thinking he could fix that roster. We were hoping. We're we're hoping for the sake of Justin Herbert, but it's just not happening. Yeah, it's not. But I'm excited. He did some very, very good stuff with the Cowboys. Uh, the Chargers, uh, they wanted to clear house, so they let him go. I feel like this is a steal for the Eagles signing him. I feel like he can do a lot with the talent we have on offense. And having a veteran guy like Fangio on the defense now... I'm here. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm not too sure about his defensive philosophy. Isn't he more like a uh, like he likes playing zone more? I think. Uh, I believe so. I don't think he's a very yeah. aggressive uh, defensive mm -hmm. coordinator. I think he's much more of the philosophy of like let the front four go, don't blitz super heavy. Um, at yeah. least that's what I believe. I can check. Oh, that. I mean, I, I, I mm -hmm. just bringing up the point there. Like, I'm a huge years on years on deck for Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. 
Jordan Davis, yeah. ha- third year now. Um, can he actually be a top tier uh, nose tackle for this team? And then for Jalen Carter, like we're kind of on standby for, can he be one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL? Mm-hmm. Um, after a really, so it started as a very strong rookie year, kind of fell off a little bit towards the end of the year. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I think I love the idea of them bringing in an experienced coaching group. Um, and Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore does a lot of motion offense. He led that Cowboys team that had the best offense in the league for two years. Um, the Charger situation didn't go as planned, but I think he'll have a lot of creative things because this offense is dynamic. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith as receivers as are luxuries. Saquon Barkley is the most dynamic running back, maybe aside from Christian McCaffrey. Um, and I think you could still argue. I was waiting for that. I think he was, <laughs> you yep, said that earlier where he was like the best running back. I was like, ah! I think Chris McCaffrey. Are we forgetting like a Madden cover athlete, Christian McCaffrey? Yeah. And then also... Strange side note, sorry. Yeah. I just I looked up Vic Fangio. Uh, his scheme is actually centered mostly around safeties, of all things. Interesting. Like, those are his like. Oh, we have, the, we have the goat on the team. So read blank. <laughs> this year is going to be a safety. Oh no! Dejean, oh god! Dej- the poor guy. I don't think Dejean is going to beat the allegations. Unfortunately. Oh no! I think that's why he was. You know what? So late. Put him in the slot, please. Keep him, please. Put him in the slot. Don't <laughs> you dare! Don't you dare take away my glorious king, Cooper Dejean. <laughs> Leave him at corner. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Uh, no, it's good. I think that's a good discussion on the Eagles. Um, their win total is at ten and a half. What do you think will end up, and what should their expectations be for I'll, the year? I'll take the over. I think their ceiling is making the Super Bowl. I'm I'm hammering the over there, and my expectations is it's Super Bowl yep. or bust this season. Like Jalen has everything around him. He unless things unless injuries happen and you know like the what ifs happen. That's what I'm saying. I can forgive him. I can forgive him for that. But if everything goes our way and we simply just choke with this team we have, yeah, Jalen might be looking at some. We might have a QB competition not, or someone's gonna get drafted. Kenny Pickett competition, buddy. <laughs> Yes, I it never is. Kenny. I'm, Kenny never Pickett. Kenny, though. I'm saying next year, maybe, maybe. Kenny Pickett is going to lead the Eagles oh to God. the Super Bowl and hoist up the I'm, Lombardi. Wait, I've seen this script before. MVP QB having a great season goes down week four, week twelve or eleven. A, Q, a white QB with long hair, with wearing the number seven, comes in, leads the number one seeded Eagles, who are the no, underdogs for no, the entire no, no. playoffs to his Super I Bowl. I told you I would goat. buy a Kenny Pickett jersey if he wins the Super Bowl for the Eagles as a starting quarterback. I said that. Listen, they're re- they've been reusing the script. I mean, the 49ers yeah. Chiefs script reused. Yeah. What make what's to say they won't reuse the Eagles uh it's, Pats it's game script? Because they always tweak it a little bit. It's never exactly the same script each time. Like they added Taylor Swift in this last year. Yeah. To like, but it's still the same overall script, but like well, they're just white, tweaking a little a white, bit to make sure a it's white not white cornerback obvious. is kind of like adding Taylor Swift. You're but right. that's what I'm saying. It's like they have to tweak it. They can't just like use the exact same one, but like adding in a white corner in Cooper to John, like, come on. Like <laughs> How is this not like the best season ever? Yeah. yeah. Ronald Darby, Cooper DeJean, I don't see a difference. Will Shipley, like, come on. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> Will Shipley, LeGarrette Blunt, I don't see a difference. I don't see a difference. That's a crazy statement. Um, <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> um, I'm de- Malcolm Jenkins, Reed Blankenship, I don't see a difference. <laughs> They're the same person. <laughs> um, I'm, o- I'm definitely over 10 and a half wins. Uh, as with Raj, I it's Super Bowl or bust. Um, you can't ask this team to be much better than it is. Again, we talked. I had said inexperience yeah. in the secondary with two rookies, not ideal. But no, no team is going to be ideal in the NFL. It's a hard cap league. Um, the most ideal of teams is like the 49ers, who are now struggling with Ayuk, and they're going to struggle when Purdy gets a contract and, and and all that type of stuff. Like they're the exception because their quarterback is so cheap. Um, most teams have a weakness to them. It's how well can you mask your weakness and how strong you can be in other areas. I don't see a roster exactly. as deep as this. So if the Eagles don't win this year, they're going to have questions to answer, and their roster may not be as good. Um, that is our first division breakdown. I feel very good about what we did on this Let's episode go. under short preparation and not a lot of experience. It helped that it was our own division. We definitely look forward to getting some guests <laughs> in on these segments. Um, 
We'll have Absolutely. a disgruntled Lions fan come on at one point. Um, <laughs> I have a Jets fan on here. Jets Steelers, fan. Jets yep. fan. Um, and then we'll sprinkle around some other people who might just want to talk about the NFL. Before we head out of here, yeah. I want to do a very brief NFL NBA free agency signing reaction. There we go. Um, and we're going to roll down this quickly. Just a couple word thoughts on each, and then we'll stop for a little bit bigger signings. Um, and I'll just roll through some of these that I just put on my list that I don't really need reaction. Those. Obi Toppin at the four year, $60 million deal to remain with the Pacers. Obi Toppin was completely irrelevant in New York, was really good with the Pacers <laughs> and made the conference final. So I thought just, that was really cool because of how bad he was with the Knicks. Um, Jonas Valanciunas gets a three year, $30 million deal to go to the Wizards. I have no idea what the Wizards are doing. They drafted somebody to play power forward slash center on their team and they just got him for no reason. He's going to be traded at the deadline. Derek Jones Jr. Three year, $30 million deals to go to the Clippers. The Clippers are just acquiring guys who can't shoot. Don't know what they're doing. <laughs> KCP goes to Orlando. That was actually really cool. But now they have way, way too many guards on their team when they already had too many guards. So I don't know what they're going to do there. CP3 goes to the Spurs after being waived by Golden State, which is so funny because he was a $30 million deal to waive. And they just said, we don't want you. The second apron is, said, we don't want you. The second apron is coming. Our team is honestly not that good, but it's better without you on the team. Oh my god. They got rid of Jordan Poole for yep. free. So the, oh my god. Now he goes to the Spurs where he can go mentor uh, Castle and Victor Wembanyama. So that's kind of cool, but very super weird. Harden gets two years, $70 million to go to the Clippers. Again, the Clippers suck. Uh, Mikal Bridges, thank you for <laughs> adding that. Goes to the Knicks. We'll do a quick trade reaction to that. Peter, give me your take as a Knicks fan. I'm happy that they got Bridges, the meme team, the Villanova Wildcats have finally reassembled back in New York. Uh, they did give up a lot of capital. Uh, I'm a little worried about that. Uh, the Knicks just need a center now. Yep. They're not going to yes. get a center, but it'll have to be, <laughs> yeah. have to be Mitch Rob. Fuck you. Oh, no. <laughs> Whatever am I going to do that you've insulted me? Um, <laughs> Raj, thoughts on the Macau trade? Uh, yeah, you know... Cool. Good for the Knicks. Yeah. And don't really care. Uh, thank God he's out of Brooklyn. Yeah, he was he was in hell there. Yeah, I, my reaction to I could go on for, for a little long. I think the Knicks raised their floor a lot. I'm not sure how much they raised their ceiling. Um, I know he's a good player. I do feel like the Knicks are kind of leaning really heavy into like team chemistry and good vibes. Which, there's a lot to say for that. Player availability, vibes, chemistry, those things are all very important. Um, but ultimately, the teams who usually win titles have a top five player in the league and really good star level guys there. I'm just not sure that's completely there for the Knicks, but we'll see. Um, they're going to be relevant for the next 10 years um, making the playoffs. So that's just, I mean, on an organizational level and for the state of basketball um, in the United States, that's really good because the Knicks own the market. Um, Isaiah Hartenstein leaves the Knicks to go to OKC. This, this was when Isaiah Hartenstein entered this season and he was playing on his last year of his deal everyone was like you know what he really could go to okc next year and this is exactly what happened so that's not really shocking yep. um they needed some size there they were the, one of the worst rebounding teams in the league chet's just a little bit too frail to play center so i think they'll probably start chet at power forward um isaiah hartenstein mm -hmm. at center so it's exciting um lebron goes to the lakers back on a two two-year deal worth a ton of money getting about 50 million a year <laughs> and then <laughs> raj puts quote the sperm was drafted um Bronny james was drafted oh with the lakers God. i think the, the the signing of Bronny james i think everyone can agree it was the most unex like it was the most expected outcome for the lakers draft when they had picked 55 nearly the last pick in the second round when he was not going to get drafted it was like yeah pick him up oh we know what's happening here and for everybody yelling about nepotism and all that, just calm down. Bronny had had success at the high school level. He's on. He's gonna sit for a couple year, like years, or try to put him in the G League. Um, let, let him play with his dad for two years. A young coach in JJ Redick who has job security for a while, and relax. And if he's bad, like you can press like the panic yeah. button. It, it's just really not worth getting upset about. Because my thing is, is like. They used a second round pick on him. 55. Like nearly the last one. Like, yeah, that seems fairly accurate. Like a second, like a late second round pick. Like, yeah. Because like, he's going to be a solid role player eventually. Like, th why wouldn't you want that on your team? Like, exactly. <laughs> everybody needs that. It's like, I, don't know, I just think people are pretending like this kid is like, just guaranteed to be a bum. And I just don't think he's guaranteed to be a bum. No. 
I don't think so. I think I think he'll be like that's what his ceiling is. He's like a very solid role player. He's even said like he models his game after players like Derek White, Drew Holiday. It's like yep. that's a Drew Holiday. Like these are perfect players for him to be looking up to. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like they are incredibly key pieces on. I guess both on Boston now, but <laughs> incredibly key pieces on championship rosters. Like that's exactly the kind of guy that he could be. Yeah. Raj, give me your breakdown on Clay Thompson to the Mavericks. <laughs> oh yeah, Clay. Oh, what was it? Oh, for ten in an elimination game. Thompson. Yes. Goes to the Mavericks. Uh, he summoned free agency, and he wanted to test the market. He got paid according to market value. Uh, I am not too sure what this is going to add to the Mavericks. I mean, you get a great shooter in Clay. It's going to be interesting to see how he meshes meshes with Kyrie and Luca. Uh, what's his face? Uh, who is the other shooter on their team? I, I forget don't. their name. They don't have any shooters. They don't? They don't okay, then Josh never Green comes yeah. off the bench. Yeah. But. Cool. So, yeah, it's good that we got 0-10 there. Um, hopefully, he won't go 0-10 in the elimination game again. <laughs> we hope. We hope. Good pick up for the good pick up for the Mavs. Uh, sad to see the Steph Clay era over. Draymond, you're next, yeah, bud. That's honestly <laughs> been the saddest thing about this all. My quick reaction to that is just it's just their offense is going to be very dynamic. You're not going to be able to like kind of double off on Luca and leave a guy in the corner as much because it's Clay Thompson. The problem is just going to be like is PJ Washington, Derek Lively, Daniel Gafford in the front court still going to be enough? Like you're going to have to start three kind of guards, two of them who don't really defend that well. Clay Thompson, not the defender he used to be. So I have really serious questions about their defense ability. Um, offensively, I think it makes kind of sense, although I'm just not sure where the ball is going to go around as much. Um, this will contrast what we're going to talk about in a minute, but I don't necessarily see how Clay fits offensively or defensively, more so defensively with the Mavericks. So that's what gives me a little bit of pause, especially because Derek Jones Jr. was a really good defender. So they're going to substitute out very good defense with okay defense and then go bad offense for good offense. And we'll have to see how it plays out. I'm Derek, a lot's going to be on Derek Lively's young shoulders next year to get the Mavs to the promised mm-hmm. land. Um, Peter, any quick thoughts on that? No, you guys have already stated everything that I thought. And then for the Sixers, because two of us are Sixers fans, Kelly Oubre, most importantly, Tyrese Maxey gets a long-term contract, and then Paul George gets signed to Philly. Very similar to the whole like Isaiah Hartenstein thing. I was like, oh, wait, guys, you know, Paul George is a free agency like a year from now. And I was like, oh, wait, hold on. Philly has a max spot. And that makes a lot of sense. And then he goes there after even some reporting was like, maybe he won't go there. My quick reaction to that is when you look at big super teams and big threes, a lot of times we've had questions about how fit goes. Bradley Beal, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant. How are those guys all going to get the ball at once? Um, When it was Kyrie, KD, and James Harden, who's going to have the ball? Um, A lot of conversations like that with big threes. This fits perfectly. you got a guard who's not ball dominant, a forward who's not that ball dominant, and a center who is ball dominant. You have one star player kind of at each position group. You fill it in with two role players. I think it makes a lot of sense for the team. The big question is going to be injury. But at the end of the day, you just have to hope that the guys stay healthy. Like I don't think you you just can't yeah. not sign Paul George because you're like, oh, we're scared that him and Joel he could get hurt. will be yeah. injured. Like, injured he was the best player available he makes a ton of sense with your team people forget paul george shot 41 percent from three last year in his later career he's kind of taken a step back from ball handling and post uh scoring and really been a dead eye shooter so at worst case scenario he's a three and d player for the uh sixers which they need the terrorist tobias harris is off the team like, <laughs> there it is yeah. for it. Yeah. He's gone. can play the four we'll see what they do at shooting guard for everybody I'm saying you, it's going to be eric gordon Eric Gordon is not playing shooting guard on the starting lineup for the Sixers. Stop saying it. It is driving me <laughs> up the wall. It's like I don't it doesn't make any sense why they would start Eric Gordon. Like he's ball dominant. You don't want to take the ball out of Maxi's hand. He can't play defense. Maxi's not the best or biggest defender. There's no reason to start Eric Gordon. And everybody is projecting him to be in the starting lineup at shooting guard, and it's not gonna <laughs> happen. You seem very happy, Justin. <laughs> well, I just it, people are dumb. Like clearly, <laughs> clearly the team knows what they're doing. They're building a really smart roster. This makes a ton of sense. The only thing that we question about this big three is if they can stay healthy. That's the only thing we're questioning. We we all know it's going to work well together. Yeah. And fools think the Sixers, after being smart, are going to be like, you know what's <laughs> what's a good decision to start Eric Gordon, like the corpse of Eric Gordon. Like, come on now, they're they're going to figure something out to put, <laughs> to put it the shooting guard position. Everyone just needs to hold their horses. There we go. Love it. Raj, any thoughts on Paul George? 
you said everything I wanted to say. Um, I knew we were going to sign another washed vet. Um, hopefully he's not washed, washed. Uh, but hopefully he's not washed. But um, I'm kind of scared about, you know, I mean, Mac, when we had Harden, I was like, okay, well, Maxi stepped up. Maybe it would have been different if Harden stayed. We would have seen something else, but Harden left. So I'm like, okay, maybe Tobias might step up. No, did not happen. Hopefully Paul George isn't injured the whole season. I really hope that's not the case. And I am a little scared of big threes, but this big three makes sense. So hopefully it works. I just don't. I, uh, I just don't see okay. a way in which the, the the big three that we have just like flames out. Like mm-hmm. I, I think it could. I think I'm there's just, a chance that like it doesn't work because of injury or just like they just don't have the talent to beat Boston. But like the idea that it's just gonna like completely flame out and there's no way they they'll succeed. Um, I think it's there. Also, I want to mention Kyle Lowry has a much greater chance to start for this team than uh, Eric Gordon does. So, yes, sir, BBL Lowry. Sign. But yeah, um, like I talk about the Sixers every year. I have zero expectations for this team. Our ceiling right now is game two uh, or round two of the playoffs. I hope we make it past that every season. That's all I hope for. Just making it to an Eastern Conference Final. That's a yeah, win in my books. That is. That's true. And on that note, that will be episode 37 of the Coconut Curry Podcast. We thank you all for listening to our first of many NFL division breakdowns of the 2024-2025 season. And on that note, we'll see you guys next time.